All right, guys, what we have here is possibly the simplest hardware setup for an It Kinda Works project yet. This little guy is doing so much under the hood that it's gonna blow your minds, or at least if it doesn't blow your mind, it blows my mind. So what we have here is a regular little ESP module. This is a Node MCU or Wemos or whatever you guys call that stuff. Uh, and one of those little WS2812B addressable LEDs just like this, just a single little length cut off like that. So what this is doing, I'm gonna hit the little reset button here, LED turns red. And what this is doing is when I restart it, it loads a configuration file from the onboard flash. What it does is it loads that config and that has a whole net info, all these different things, you know, telling it how to run, what it should do, what network to connect to, all of that. And it loads that and tries to connect to, to a network. And if it does connect, that's great. And this little light will turn green. But if not, like we see here, the light is yellow. What that means is that it could not find the network. So what it does is it goes into AP mode or broadcast mode and creates its own network, which we can connect to, load up a web page, just like those expensive little, you know, dongles that you buy to control your lights at home. It broadcasts its own network, which we can then log into and configure this module for whatever network we want. So this represents probably the biggest feature update in all of ESP Helper history. So this is basically just a little test platform that I have. If you wanna follow along and see how I put this together, then keep watching. If not, skip five minutes or whatever it says on screen now, and we'll get into the software part of this in just a few minutes. But for the rest of us, what I have here is a brand new little ESP Wemos module a little chunk of LED strip and some magnet wire here. And with these three things, we can just put together one of these little modules. So let's get into it. Uh, I am going to just sort of time lapse this because it's all pretty boring. But before I do, if we take a look at a pre-made module, you can see that we have the five volt, we have five volts data and ground and five volts and ground will go to the five volt and ground pins on the Wemos or the ESP module. And my data pin, my DO pin, is going to go to digital pin two on my ESP module. Now, the one thing that you wanna make sure when you're working with this LED strip is you'll see on the LED strip there are little arrows. There's a little arrow pointing the direction that the data will go. So you want to make sure that you connect everything up in relation to that arrow. So my data and five volt will all go down here. And if we had more, more LEDs, that data would flow from here and go down the strip like that. So just something to think about. So now that we know the pins that we're gonna use, let's just wire this up. All right, and there we go, guys. All done, nice and neat, and I got all the connections made. All right, so now, of course, we have to go and take a look and learn and understand how all of this works. But before we get into the code on this little guy, I have a pretty cool new thing from It Kinda Works that I wanna talk to you guys about. So let's jump over to the computer now and check it out, and then we'll get into the code. All right, guys, so here is the new forum for It Kinda Works. 
Now, I know a lot of you guys, you send me constant messages, either in YouTube comments or YouTube messages, and more often than I'd like, I just don't see those messages. They, you know, too many come in, I, I, it's, it's hard to filter through it all. So what I've set up here is a forum. If you go to itkindaworks.com slash forum, you will get to this page and you can register and, and post your questions. Ask me whatever you want. Uh, new ideas. If you've had an idea for an It Kinda Works video, go and make a, a new post here. You can see I actually posted something that I wanna do, which is a home monitoring platform video. But if you guys have ideas, which I know you guys do, please put them on, put them on this forum. Let me know what you guys wanna see. And along with that, if you have questions on videos, you can't get something working, post in the It Kinda Works video and tutorial discussion section. And if you just have something cool that you're working on, you wanna talk about it, we have a section for that as well. So please guys, go and sign up and let me know what you guys think. My goal for 2018 is to really foster It Kinda Works into a community. As much as I enjoy creating videos for you guys, I also really wanna hear from you guys, hear what you think, listen to your ideas, and hopefully, you know, have a great community. All right, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's finally go and look at all the code for this. And I will admit, guys, it's a little bit big, but hopefully we can reduce it down into sort of manageable chunks that are fairly easy to understand. All right, guys, so here's the code that is running on these little ESP modules. Now, make sure to go and check the description for the code because there's a link in there to a GitHub gist with all of this in there. So what we have is up at the top, we're importing a bunch of ESP helper related libraries. We are going to use the fast LED library uh, for controlling our LED. So if you've never used fast LED, it's a really, really comprehensive library for accessing and controlling RGB lights of basically any sort. Uh, I believe the URL for it is fastled.io. So if you'd like to check that out, go and definitely check out that library. Uh, you'll also need to download it for this demo, so go and download it from there. And as per usual with all of these videos that I make, I love the Metro Timing Library, so we're bringing that in as well. So up at the top, we have a bunch of ESP helper setup. So I have a net info called config, which will be where we store the configuration from the file system, an instance of ESP helper, an instance of an ESP web server, and creating the ESP helper web config. So that's what this here is doing. And then we have an instance of net info called home net. And that's just going to be, if we have never configured this before, that's just our default values. So that's all pretty easy. We have a Metro and some timeout stuff. This is what lets the ESP kind of sit there and wait for a connection. And if it can't connect after 20 seconds, then it will just fail over, create its own network, and do all of that stuff so we can configure it. And right after that, we have that configuration info. We have the hotspot name, so I'm just calling it ESP hotspot, without any password, and the default IP address for the ESP will be like most routers, 192.168.11, all pretty simple. Coming down a little bit further, we set up the LED variables, and then we get into setup. So setup basically starts the serial line. You'll see this actually prints a whole bunch of stuff out. Sets up the light with the default color, the starting color of red, meaning it's starting up. Print some stuff out to the serial line. Start the Wi-Fi, which I'll get into, it's lower down. And then set up our config page. So we have uh, an interesting little feature here is that our config page can auto fill all of the fields automatically. 
based on just whatever the current configuration file is. So you don't have to retype in if you want to just change one little bit of your configuration. It'll automatically fill everything in and you can just change that one little bit. We'll, we'll see that at the end of the video, but it is kind of a nice thing. We're going to start our config page and then start the server. And also we have a nice little thing here all the way down at the bottom. I have this method, this, this function called handle status. And if we just go to whatever the IP ad address of the ESP is, we'll get this little status page. It's just a little bit of uh, HTML showing the name of the device, the name of the network that it's connected to, the IP of the device, and the uptime. So it's just kind of a little demo of how you might create a status page for your device. So coming back up here to the top, loop is nice and simple. You know I love to keep loop simple for you guys. All we're doing here is we have a status variable and we basically, we're going to just manage ESP helper, which is a function down below we'll talk about. It's basically just handling all the things the ESP helper has to do. And then we have an if statement and then we have an if statement here, which just checks to see if we have a full connection and all of your regular loop code would go inside of there. So it's pretty simple. Now below here, you really don't have to worry about, and I'm not going to go into a whole ton of detail because there is a fair amount of code in here, but basically we'll go to start Wi-Fi here. So start Wi-Fi. The first thing it's going to do is try to load a config from the from a file. So load config basically starts up the file system on the ESP, attempts to load or attempts to validate a config. And if it can load it, that's great. It will load all the information in. But if not, then it will basically just create a brand new config file with those default values from above. So it will just restart and then it will, you know, this is sort of for a first time startup or if your file gets corrupted, that's what it will do. So that's what load config does. Start Wi-Fi basically sets up ESP helper, does those basic things that we've seen in all the videos. If not, check out one of the ESP helper intro videos on my channel. Uh, and basically what we're doing is it will attempt to connect to a network, whatever network we've specified in our configuration file, and we'll run for a certain amount of time until we time out. And if we have timed out, it will then change the ESP over to access point mode, AP mode, broadcast a network, and change the LED color over to orange, telling us that it couldn't connect and that we need to configure the device. So that is what check for Wi-Fi timeout will do is switch over to broadcast mode if the timeout has elapsed. And the last thing that we really haven't talked about here is my Wi-Fi callback. If we can successfully call, connect to the network, this little function here will fire off, changing the LED to green and telling us everything's all good. So that is basically it. I know I've kind of skimmed through here, but hopefully from the video and from the comments and serial printouts, you guys can kind of see how this all works. So let's now load this onto our new ESP and see how it works. So here you can see the uploaded code is running and you can see it says starting up, please wait. Now, when this initially starts up, it will actually take a little while because it has to set up the file system. But after it's set up the file system once, startup is pretty quick. So it's setting up the file system here, getting ready to go, and hopefully in a moment, it will continue to run correctly. All right, so there we go. File system loaded, loaded config, config loaded, more should probably take that out and connecting to network. So you can see it's red here. 
it's trying to connect to the network, but it's connecting using these default things that I've laid out here. So it's not going to work. It says connection timeout starting AP mode. So it started the, the broadcast mode, the access point mode. The LED here has turned an orangey yellow color. And now if I look at my networks, I can see there is an open network called ESP hotspot. So I'm going to connect to that. It doesn't have a password. You could put one in there if you wanted to. And now if I go to 192.168.1.1, just like any router you would buy, it will actually show me the system status. So it tells me my device name is new ESP8266. It's attempted to connect to your SSID, IP address 000. So the status stuff doesn't quite work perfectly. Uh, and hopefully I can fix that in the future, but it doesn't quite work perfectly in broadcast mode. But if we now go to slash config, we now have our little config page here. So you can see what I was talking about before with that automatically filling in of certain areas. You can see it's automatically filled in these areas here. And the password fields, even if you have a password set, it won't show it here. But if I leave these blank, it will use the previous value. So if I just click submit right now, it won't change anything, but it will use the default MQTT password of your MQTT password and all that. So I'm going to change this to my ESP, my password, I'll make it my home password or my home network and my password and I'll put in a password for OTA. I'll leave, I'll put in a, an IP address for that as well. And leave this blank for mine. And now I can hit submit. And it loads the config, restarts, the light has turned red. And if we go back here, we can actually see it's starting up, connecting to network. And look at that, the light on the ESP has turned green. So... You can see, oh, what did it do? All right, well, I had a little bit of a hiccup there, but it is now connected to the network. We have a green light and everything is working. So now it can just operate like any other ESP helper project. So thanks for watching, guys. If you're interested in this, you can definitely find the code for it in the description. If you want to see more videos like this, go and subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash itkindaworks. If you have any questions, go to the forum, itkindaworks.com slash forum. And if you're feeling really awesome and you want to help support the page and the channel that much more, go to patreon.com slash itkindaworks and feel free to chip in whatever you can. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.